Hello class, for this video I'm going to do exercise 821. Remember that these exercises are ones in which you're supposed to first decide whether or not this pattern of reasoning is valid or invalid. And then depending upon what you decide, you have to do two different things. So if it's valid, then what you need to do is provide a formal proof that it is. And if it's invalid, then you need to provide a proof that it's not. Of course, such a proof will not be a formal proof, rather it will be a counterexample. Uh, and the way that we're going to do the counterexamples is you just use Tarski's world. So we're going to have to both interpret these sentences like A, B, and C to mean specific things, and then we're going to have to build a world in which the premise is true and the conclusion false. Okay, so let's get to the task of seeing whether or not this is valid. My premise is B arrow C, so I'm told whenever B is true, C must be true too, and then I'm asked to infer if A or B is true, then C must be true. Uh, we should be a little suspicious of this because weakening the antecedent, remember if you think of this along analogy with a valid argument, uh, if my premise is B and, and I'm guaranteed that C is true whenever B is true, if I weaken my premise, I'm not guaranteed B is even true anymore. So how do I know C must be true? I'm just told if B is true, C must be true. But now I'm only told, well, either A or B is true. I don't even know B is true anymore. I'm weakening my premises. I'm weakening my antecedents. So uh, I can't be guaranteed of the conclusion anymore. Now, if you can't see that, if you don't see something suspicious here, then what could you do? Well, you could always just do a truth table because this will tell you definitively whether it's valid or not. So here I already put in my premise B arrow C and my conclusion A or B arrow C. Let's just fill this out really fast to see what it looks like. Uh, when is B arrow C going to be false? Just when B is true and C is false. So that's when it fails. Otherwise it's going to be true. So uh, its truth table looks like this. Now let's compute the truth function for A or B. Well this is pretty straightforward, just a disjunction. Now our arrow, now there's lots of ways this can fail notice because look at all these T's. So those are liabilities. See the arrow is going to be true trivially whenever the antecedent is false, but these T's are dangerous. So now we have to make sure C is true. See whenever C is false, that's going to come out false. So now let's check for validity. Well this is true and true, but that's true. Here my premise is false, so that's irrelevant. Here they're both, uh, my premise is true, but this is also true. Uh, excuse me, I was looking at the disjunction. That's irrelevant. So I just need to check whenever this is true, that's true. Here it's false, so it doesn't matter. Here the premise is true, but that's true. Aha, here the premise is true, but this is false. We have a problem. It's that indeed, that single row is the problem because in all these other cases, uh, the argument is not shown to be invalid. So notice this gives us a recipe for telling how we can create a counterexample. We need to make A true, B false, and C false, and we're indeed going to have a counterexample. So how do we do that in Tarski's world? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to interpret those atomic sentences. A, B, and C, we just need to make up something that we can make true or false in Tarski's world. So I chose cube A to be B and large A to be C. Notice my premise uh, is B arrow C. So that's what, um, so that's why cube A is B. So this has to be coordinate with my premise. So that A or B, so notice I put tet A in here. That's my, that's my atomic letter A. <clears throat> now here's cube B arrow C. So you have to be really careful in the way that you construct these sentences. They have to exactly mirror the pattern of atomic sentences in here. So you have to be uh, mindful of what you're using for sentence B and what you're using for sentence C. Notice for B and C, when I started my first premise, I chose two properties that are totally independent of each other. If you choose unluckily, you might actually not be able to make the argument, uh, demonstrate that the argument is invalid because the predicates that you happen to choose in Tarski's world actually have some further interconnections which are unwanted. So I chose cube A and large A because whether A is large and whether it's a cube are totally independent matters. Now it turns out that choosing for atomic letter A uh, the property being a tetrahedron, uh, that doesn't really matter. So what do we have to do in order to make the premise true and the conclusion false? Well, notice in order to make this false, let's just see what my values are like so far. Oops, I need to call this thing A. Uh, so I just have a sole cube in my world. I'm going to name it A if I can get this figured out. There we go. Uh, so right now my conclusion is false. Great. But my premise is false too. So I don't yet have a counterexample. The problem is that A is a cube. What if I turned A into a dodecahedron? Uh, does that help matters? Well, now they're both true, unfortunately. So I need to figure out a way of making my premise true, but my conclusion false. And the key is to make sure that it's not a tetrahedron, uh, excuse me, the key is to make sure that it is a tetrahedron. 
because the way that I chose my sentences, notice, I need A to be, uh, on my counter example, I need uh, atomic sentence A to be true. So that's why I knew I'm going to make this thing a tetrahedron. Then cube A is going to be false, that's great, and that guarantees that this is true. And I also need to make sure that A is not large because I want that to be false as well in order for this overall arrow sentence to become false. So now I have my counter example. My premise is true and my conclusion false. And indeed, I could just use bool to help me construct uh, that counter example if I couldn't think of it. So now I need to submit both of these two things to uh, grade grinder, and then it will tell me if I got everything perfectly right. Okay, thanks.